time has come to pressure wash this old beast. I'm going to start by using some garage sale oven cleaner. And you just kind of take it and just spray it everywhere. Try not to damage important components. <coughs> Don't breathe it in. <coughs> See, now I can get in there and pressure wash in through the wheel wells and get some of the stuff that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to do with the wheels on. So it's all blocked up and we're going to cover a few things on the engine and then get to pressure wash. Now we let it soak for a minute and then we'll pressure wash it all off. All right, one thing I like to do is I like to get all the water off the machine after I'm done pressure washing it. So a lot of times I'll use compressed air like this.
I probably t over tightened the um, the bearing inside the hubs and so I really appreciate everybody that commented let me know that I didn't realize I did that so we're gonna correct that right now Basically tighten it up till you get it snug and then you back it off a turn or a, a flat one flat so there's tight so one flat would be right there still turns fine all right got the locking ring And then I ground the edges off this because somebody had beaten it up with a hammer to get it out and I wanted it flat. So. All right. No play that way, no play that way. That should do it. Put the actual shaft back in. Same thing on the other side. Okay, so as you saw, that thing leaks like a geyser. So, I've got a special tool for taking this big nut off. So this is the tool for taking the nut off. Basically the way it works is, it has three half inch little keys and a slot. So what you do is you take this piece off, You slip this thing over the cylinder here, and then these three keyways engage with the nut on the actual cylinder itself. And then that allows you to put tension on it with a big bar in that hole there so that we can break that nut loose without having to take it off the machine. So we're going to get this set up and give it a try. I decided to take the whole cylinder out. Okay, I've got a chain vice grip clamp on this, a strap up under it, and I'm going to see if I can lift the cylinder up with this.
to reconfigure this. There we go. Got it out. It's not as easy as I wanted it to be, but old Big Joe did the job. All right, so we're here at Mike's. We're gonna take the cylinder and uh, bust it open so we can rebuild it. spinning.
Okay, so here's the plan. This is a Caterpillar hydraulic cylinder machine. And what it does is you take your bad cylinder, you clamp it in tight, and then what you do with it is you use the hydraulic pressure to spin and turn these nuts off. So right here is a nut on the end of this hydraulic cylinder, and it will unscrew, allowing us access to the actual cylinder inside. But what we really want access to is all the seals. The dust seals here, all of the, the seals in there, and that is how we're going to essentially rebuild the cylinder and get it back to the point where it's going to no longer have a leak like you've seen previously, that, that geyser that was happening. So this is not a cheap machine. This is a very expensive piece of machinery. This is not mine. Obviously, if you've seen the tour of, of uh, the Forgotten Junkyard, this is here at Mike's. So I asked him if we could break this thing loose. He's told me, come on over. So that's the plan. We're going to use this bad boy to to bust this cylinder loose so we can rebuild it. So ideally this machine is supposed to have this end of the cylinder locked into these jaws here. Well, we don't have the necessary stuff to get this in there, so we may just try and just use this wrench here by hitting on this end of it to try and get it to turn while we have it locked in this. So that's kind of the plan, I think, at this point. so far and then it'll stop. Yep. I want to make the other one because I don't want to have cat, cat and it both. Yeah. Like, I want to balance in this thing. All right, there's our nut. Oh man, that seal <laughs> is just crumbling. That outer dust seal. It's just in pieces. Give me one of those. That was like the, maybe a cap there. And then so now the goal is to pull a cylinder out of this sleeve. Well, we got a little carried away and actually got the whole cylinder out. And so basically the way this works is this machine, not only does it unscrew it, but it pulls the whole tube so you can remove the cylinder and get to all the seals. So there's seals here, there's a clip on the end, and then there's these seals here. And as you can see, these are just crumbling, just falling apart. So the main bad seals are the one that's right here. There's an O-ring bad here. And then this front nut had some bad seals. These lower seals down here look really good actually. So Probably still gonna replace everything just because it's cheap. 
This is the top of the cylinder. So basically this is the big nut that comes off at the very top. And there should be, this here was the wiper. And it would have fit down in there like that. And basically it keeps the dirt and water and grease and stuff from getting down into the cylinder. It doesn't actually seal. It's just more of a protective measure at the very top of the cylinder. So we got a new one of those o-ring here. Got a new one of those. So that's this here. So those will make this piece good. I'm going to clean this up with some Scotch-Brite and I've already kind of ground the all of the basically the Mars for when somebody at some point used a punch to try and get this open and we used a tool that locked into three of these grooves and so I smoothed all that out I'm feeling for any burrs you don't want any burrs or anything you also want to get this really clean in here so it seals and right now it's not clean at all and so I'll get that done and then this one here it had basically all that was left of this type of seal here was the o-ring it just crumbled into pieces and so this piece will go there once we get it clean and then right here we've got another o-ring and a wiper we've got the thin piece here and then the bigger o-ring and so the wiper is always on the opposite side of pressure all right got it all cleaned up and we'll pop it together this is the wiper this is the very top of the cylinder here pops in there like that new o-ring that top cap is ready to rock and roll all right now this seal with the o-ring the o-ring faces towards the pressure which will be coming up through this way Then this would go right here, and that slides over the top of that. Next up, next up we got the wiper and the o-ring. Put the o-ring on first. Well, that's not right. Well, this is the O-ring you gave me. Yeah, that's way too loose. I gotta go back. Well, I have to get a different O-ring for that. This is the one that was in it. The wiper seems fine. Seems to fit nicely. Just gotta get that O-ring in there. Alright, so here's the bottom of the cylinder. So, right here on the bottom, there's an O-ring. This is the old one the new one and it actually technically goes in on the shaft itself so it doesn't fit right here so this will go on the shaft this metal clip is basically the retaining ring that holds the entire bottom piece on so that'll go on we'll reuse that that's the new o-ring this is the seal that goes right here as you can see you got a crack here and a crack here so that seal is broken and was not working properly. So we got a brand new seal here. And it goes on like so. O-ring down towards the pressure. Had these little spacers in there. And 
then that ring. So that's that. Yep. Until I get the right O-ring, I'm going to work on something else. I've decided to go ahead and rebuild all the cylinders just because then they'll be done and I won't have to worry about them. Well, there's the pin. There's the cylinder. So somebody based, oh, shit, that scared me. So at some point somebody welded tried to weld this here. There should be a nut right here that you remove to take this cylinder out, but there's not. Yeah. I wonder why my flame wasn't working. I am out of oxygen, just about. So underneath that uh, welded plate was the nut that lets me get the shaft off. So we're gonna take that off and then be able to get the cylinder out. So after fighting this thing all last night, I finally got it out. I had to break the nut that was holding this yeah. to even get it off. So it's got this basically nut here. We've loosened the set screw and come to find out it's already loose. Now we just need a way to pull it out.
we go. Yeah. Got a few seals in there. <laughs> yeah. These are packings. They're all right. I don't know why they put packings up there, but I guess they have a reason for it. The flat one, one, two, three, four cone ones. just come like this. Beautiful. You see? Yeah. And I got a regular spanner wrench goes inside them pins. Yep. So got a three quarter one. drive and a half drive. Well, okay. That's that's one tool I don't have is a good pin spanner. Well you can buy them online. I should well, buy another one. They're expensive. Oh uh, I think you can get two of them for eighty four. Oh really? For the big that's one less than I thought. But normally what I do with them there is I'll weld the bar across and weld three points. I stick yeah. two in, weld it like this and weld it like that. Uh -huh. Stick it in the vise. Turn the cylinder on there. I put the cylinder on a on a dog winning pedestal with a with an angle iron and then just turn the cylinder with a rod down there. Yeah, that makes sense. And make it locked in. We're doing it the old generic way. Alright, so there's that seal. And you put your eye back on. Yep. There yep. you are. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. And then you just, I got a bar up there. And do anything and tap the bar out. That bar right here will do it. Tell you what, you don't even have to hit it like that. You can hold it and I'll, I'll you smack it and I'll hold it for pressure this way. Put it right like that, take the bar, bar through it and you just, yeah, and then I'll hold that. Mm -hmm. okay. Or you did anyway. So I was going to say, there it is. I don't worry about the oil it's usually keep the ground coated. Keep the bugs off. Yeah. Nope, not happening. Good luck. I was going to say, these babies can be a little bit tight. Sometimes I'll, I'll lay them with this bar. Now smack that bar out right there. You get a little more room. Oh, boy. That makes that life that's so much easier. Mm -hmm. A little bit harder sometimes on some when they're not real soft like this here's not. Yeah. It gets a little tougher, but as you go, it'll come in when I get it in there. I went too far with it. You know what out and kind of push it. This might be the bigger tool to bunch, and I had it just a little bit too far over that one, but I'll take it off this one. See, it went over that little groove, and I didn't want yeah. to. Let me slide that back down where it belongs. seal this way okay okay then when you get her down you go in and then you yeah. and you let up and then you work it around you put it in like this in like this because you can't get hardly in, in there without without work. tearing it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without trying to do it and you just work it around to it until it pops mm -hmm. oh yeah just like that yeah, wow, that's that's crazy. <laughs> now that's that's the right tool for the job. I should do it pretty much. 
Let's get her all. It wasn't too dirty. So can't beat that. Yeah, not much in there. No. Really. The water drained out, so you can look down in it, but I don't think it's that looks it's like a baby's it was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Clean this big cylinder here. It's too hot. That'll be fine for now to get this this piece on. You add the voice to it later? No, I. it records audio and then whatever we're talking. Mm -hmm. Like, so sometimes, a lot of times, I'll just be quiet yeah. or I'll talk to the camera. So people enjoy watching the video. Sure, well, I know they do. I've already had sent people to watch yours and they, they already commented about it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Just I figure he's a joke, but okay, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Fine with me. <laughs> no, they're, they're real. They really like it. I don't. I mean, I, I know. I, I always I, think I'm a joke at times. No, 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 I was just. <laughs> you know, a little humor helps a lot. Yeah. The day go long. Oh, well, yeah. I was there. That's and why I always felt like I told you I only know enough to be dangerous. Yeah, that's it. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah, and I can drop this just a little bit easier to make this here. We'll take that board out of there and put this board in. I think it'll be better. Yep, that'll be perfect. I can. Square. She's in. She doesn't. I gotta push these in a little bit more. Okay. Okay. They should be pretty close, but they're not quite. They'll go a little bit more. I know they will. Those two guys might have to run them in a little bit. And sometimes they just gotta get in there just a little tighter. Now, do we wanna use the machine to push it? Not really. If we can push this down, I think you can shove that in a little bit, and I think it'll go. I think it'll go. Okay. Make sure these rings go in. I thought these rings were tighter in. Me too. I know they were. Wait a minute, Mark. There's something ain't right in that groove. This is not. This is too far out. These are not on the right thing. They ain't on the right way. They, they might they go, go right here. here. Right here. They go right here. Push this ring back. Okay. This is what holds this. Let's take this out a little bit. Okay. Let's see if I can get it over just a little bit. Okay. That's good. Okay. I can get it over. Okay, this thing's got to come back. We got to drive this back, and this ring goes here. See what I'm saying? Okay, I think that's. You get a screwdriver and push her back. I think that's what it does. My thoughts are. I think the white ring was a spacer, not a yeah. uh, flip. You see? Because they're not flush. All the way, yep. There yeah, yeah, okay. Yep. I wondered. Mm -hmm. Yep. I got it. I got it. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, now it'll go in there. Yeah, there we go. I feel better. Perfect. That's much better. <laughs> I kept looking at it. There you go. Now it's going to go right on in. Okay. Now, now we can push it with the machine. We don't care. It's a little bit crooked, though. I don't like that. We need to come up. 
with this. Or, that, or down with this. Or down with that. Just a little bit more. Yeah. There we go. Now that's a lot better. Yeah. Than that. Just got it. There you go. Again. Probably past the threads. Oh yeah. yeah okay. We've had. Cool. So we can so use the machine. Machine for the, rest the bumper in. Yeah.
work. Sit down, take a break. So this is the side shift cylinder that allows the forks to go side to side. On this end, it had just a bunch of welds and you know little weld berries just kind of holding it on because the the nut that should have gone on there probably was stripped out years ago and that's just how they fixed it. The other end they had this nut on first and then this one after it. I was able to get the first one off. The second one I ended up having to take a die grinder and just zipping it off. Anyway I'm gonna put a die over this try and clean these threads up reuse it get a better nut than this one and then that'll be how I secure that side. This side, I think the plan is, I haven't finished closing this up, so it's still, I can pull the cylinder out. I'll pull all that out, zip this off, weld a bolt to it, and it'll be good to go. bolt. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off and weld it onto the end because I want this collar to be able to stick through so this tube can get as close to the, the mechanism as possible. Heavy duty caterpillar bolt. Okay, there we go. That'll that'll work perfect for me. So I figured out that this big washer that was on the other side was installed wrong. It should be on this side. So I'm going to use those two washers. And actually, I'm not going to use this one. And I've got a lock nut. I'll probably put the lock nut on. And then I might put this one on after it just because why not, right? If there's extra threads, might as well use them. <laughs> so I cleaned these threads up enough that now I can get a nut onto it and it'll tighten down. So it seems pretty solid, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. And then on the inside, I'm going to try and put a hardened bolt or something to keep that back and forth play from, from happening again. So the oil seal here Probably would have been fine, but it had been dented and dinged up, and so I got a new one. Had to get that, had to order that. So that's what this is. So we'll install this. And I'm going to use the spacer they give you that actually fits on the cylinder. Chunk of pipe. Just like that, new oil seal. So this cylinder is ready to go back in. There we go. Yeah, finally. Oh, yeah. Now the lines, and that one will be done.
Much nicer. Well, that was a little sketchy, but it's in. Almost. So I just filled the hydraulic fluid up to full. I want to check it again. Yeah, we're at nothing on the stick. So all the cylinders were empty and those lines were empty. So we're going to add some more again. I knew that was going to happen. I'm going to cycle it through a few times. Just make sure we're all the way full. Here's my key. The start switch uh, quit working on me.
that's all the way up. So far, no leak. hydraulic line. That one right there blue. Yeah, I was worried about that. Some of these lines just are a little crunchy. I really need to do them all, but that's a lot of money. Well, I'd say it lifts. Still no leaks other than that one hydraulic line for the tilt cylinder, so yeah, that's awesome. forks on the ground all right well i didn't get to show you how nice everything looks in here after pressure washing it so obviously as you saw we have a hydraulic leak here in one of those lines but everything is so much cleaner in here you can actually see you know the filters the covers the all the hydraulic lines the engine is already pretty clean, but got the, the 60 showed up there on the side there. We actually have Heister that showed up, but as I pressure washed it, I also found Shyster. And so clearly somebody long before I had this machine called this old beast Shyster. So I think that's going to be its name. I think we're going to name it Shyster heard uh, many people call these old beasts shysters back in the day but there's 60 here showed up under some paint a bunch of the like bondo or whatever the heck this was kind of chipped off on the on the engine cover there but I'm not too worried about that we're gonna really go through it and this machine's gonna get a good paint job um, it's not gonna be what you think it's gonna be but She's gonna be bad ass when I'm done with it. Got both the forks back on. The cylinders are holding beautifully. And for everybody that wondered if I understood the safety of forklifts is to leave them on the ground, the answer is yes. 
but there's always an exception to the rule. And the exception to the rule is when you buy some old piece of junk machinery like this, and then it doesn't want to lift back up, well, then what you do is you chain them up until you got it fixed. And so now we're at the point where it's fixed. Well, mostly. I need to do hydraulic lines and at least some of them, the one that blew for sure. But all in all, this machine is almost there. I've got a new seat for it. I want to do some lights, some gauges. Still don't think I'm getting an idle circuit in the carburetor, but it's running a lot better now. And then filters. I'm going to do a transmission filter, hydraulic filter, minor stuff really. Um, so at the end of the day, the fact that it operates, drives, brakes, and now should lift will be a very, very, very big step in getting this old beast back together. So, All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the old beast is almost ready to go. Totally pumped that the hydraulic cylinders, at least these tilt ones, the lift one, and the side shift one, are all fixed and ready to rock and roll because those are the important ones. Those are the ones that are safety issues. And so we basically got all of the lift functions repaired. Now it's just a matter of chasing down hydraulic lines that are bad, getting it ready to be put back to work. As always, thanks for joining me in the project here at Salvage Workshop. And this old beast will be back soon. Got a bunch of other ideas for it and Totally excited to have it ready to rock and roll so I can start using it on big projects like the cat and a few others I've got coming up. So stay tuned. More on this and more on Old Red and more on a lot of the other projects to come. You guys have a great one.